We're here at Camp PD Retreat Center in Marlboro County, one of South Carolina's hidden treasures, and today we'll be going on a tour of all of the facilities. That's right, Blair. Camp PD has been around almost as long as this old cowboy, and I'm really excited. We're going to show the folks about this, uh, the facilities and stuff, see some of the beautiful scenery around here. That's right, so stay tuned for more exciting horse tales. Joining me now is Jason Steen, Facilities Director at Camp PD Retreat Center. Thank you so much for being with me today. Yes, thank you for being here. This is such a beautiful facility. I had no idea that this was up in South Carolina, a hidden little treasure. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's been here for over 50 years. Uh, we're Camp PD Retreat Center, owned and operated by New Harmony Presbytery. Uh, we have a 550 acre facility here. Um, we have about 12 cabins, uh, small cottages, uh, big campground. Uh, two lakes, equestrian center, and a high ropes adventure course here. Wow. And so when you say retreat center, does that mean that people can come up and have birthday parties, family reunions, all kinds of stuff? Yes, it does. We've, uh, we've been primarily a summer camp, but now we're a year-round retreat center. Birthday parties, corporate outings, uh, team building, exercises, uh, you name it, we do it here at Camp PD. And so what are the ages for the, um, for the kids that can come to the camp during the summer? Uh, Five-year-old through 12-year-old during okay. the summertime. So all ages. Yes, all ages. And they'll be able to do a little bit of everything for the summer camp, from horseback riding to swimming and everything? Yeah, our, our summer camp offers horseback riding. We have sports camp, uh, adventure camps, uh, and we just about anything you can do. And traditional camp activities go on all throughout the week also. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. So if people want to come to the camp, how do they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with us by our website as www.camppd.org. Okay. And you get on there and our email and contact information is, is on there. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. Now let's saddle up and go for a ride and tour good. the facility. Sounds good. Jason, DP was pushing me around a little bit. That's what horses do. You just can't control them. Right. Kind of like the weather. Thank goodness it's not raining like it was yesterday. Yes, it's nicer today. It uh, is. So tell me about the horse facilities. Um, can people bring their own horses? Yeah, our equestrian facility, uh, we ha you can come up and go for a trail ride. Okay. Uh, if you don't have any horse experience, you can also come up and uh, we have uh, horses available. So one of the only places, the only place in Marlboro County that you can do that, come up and, and lease a horse and go ride. Great. Well, how many horses do y'all have? Right now we have a total of six that we uh, use in our program. Okay. And there's some, uh, some other horses down there that we board. Okay, great. And I believe my dad um, was going to donate the South Carolina State Heritage Horse, the Marsh Taggy, to let y'all use for some riding. Is that right? Yes, we're looking to uh, partner with your dad. And uh, and so people that want to experience the Marsh Taggy going on a trail ride, uh, we have uh, a large facility here that you could come up and get on his horse and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and go on a, a trail ride. So y'all have all breeds of horses up here? We have all breeds. We have uh, Quarter horses, we have some Tennessee walking horses, uh, and which will be new is the Marsh Tacky horse will be new. We have Welsh ponies that, that board here, so a little bit of everything. Jason, you said you have two ponds. Yes, we do. We have a fishing lake and a canoe lake, okay. uh, so the kids are able to come and uh, have a good time at, at both of them. That's great. So do they get to keep the fish? Yes, they get to keep the fish and they can fry them right here at camp. Oh, really? Yes. I bet they love that. <laughs> yeah, whenever they catch them if they're good uh -huh. fishermen. <laughs> so what else do y'all have to do? I think y'all have an indoor basketball court and also a swimming pool. Yes, we have a big swimming pool out in our field and we have a, a covered basketball area for rainy day spaces. Uh, so if, you're, if you come up here on the weekend and it's raining, you can still have activities. That's great. 
So what other kind of activities? Do y'all have like Bible studies or anything like that? Yeah, we have Bible study for our summer uh, program, uh, canoeing, basketball. Uh, we've built a multi-purpose sports field, so we do that. Uh, you, you name it, uh, any type of traditional camp activity. Uh -huh. Four Square is real popular here at camp. Okay. Uh, so Bible sto study, storytelling, campfires. We have uh, quite a few campfire pits here that uh, kids enjoy doing some more. So y'all have how many kids to one camp counselor? Uh, have? We run a uh, seven to one ratio, which okay. is American Camping Association ratio. It says uh, seven kids to one counselor. Okay. And, so, and we follow that recommendation. Okay. Well, I wish I would have known about this when I was younger. I would have come to camp here. <laughs> yeah, and we, we offer camp to everybody. Uh -huh. uh, like I said, any and all ages can come to, to camp here. So you don't have to be affiliated with uh, with the Presbyterian Church to come to camp. So just anybody that wants to come to have a great camping acti experience, come on out. Well, that is good. Good to know. Folks, we're having a great time up here at Camp PD today. Matter of fact, I'm getting a little thirsty and so is Simpson. That brings us to the vet tip of the day. Hey there, my name's Adam Michael Berger and I'm a veterinarian with South Carolina State Veterinarian's Office in Clemson University. Today I'm here with Tebow. Tebow's a gelding, but one of the terms I wanted to talk to you about was the word crypt orchid. What does crypt orchid mean? Another term for it would be a high flanker or a ridgling or a rig. That means a stallion that actually has testicles that never descended into a scrotum. They can be both, they can be one, Typically the testicles may actually be stuck in the inguinal canal that is right above the scrotum or actually they're actually all the way up into the abdomen and they never actually descended. These horses typically act like a stallion but they're not fertile. If they do have one testicle in the scrotum they can still be fertile but they still have one inside so they are termed a cryptorchid, a unilateral cryptorchid. So, but if they have two inside the scrotum they're just a normal horse. So the scrotum is where the testicles should hang and then these horses or stallions can actually be castrated and be called a gelding just like Tebow here or they actually they can be maintained for breeding purposes. Anyway, my name is Adam Michael Berger with the State Veterinarian's Office. If you have any questions about castrating your horse or crypt orchids or reproductive questions, don't hesitate to contact me or your local veterinarian. Folks, join me today is Mary Jane Evans from Chiraw, South Carolina. And I heard you teach school home in Chiraw, right? I sure do. I teach at Chiraw Primary School. Yeah, and we're at, what, one of several lakes here at Camp PD. Yes, David, this is two of our uh, many lakes that we have here at uh, Camp PD Retreat Center. They're both uh, spring-fed lakes. Well, I was uh, talking to Jason Steen as we were riding over here, and he told me a little bit that uh, you actually came here uh, when you were younger. I sure did. I came over here for, I guess, about five or six years. Well, that's great. Well, tell me a little bit about Camp PD. Okay, Camp PD um, is about 50 years old, um, began in 1960. Um, we have summer camp here, and we also have um, groups that come over and use the camp during the week and also on the weekends. Um, we have birthday parties here. We mm -hmm. have with pony rides. We have um, the canoe lake that we're standing on right now that you can come out and enjoy paddling around in a canoe. We have a fishing lake that you can go fishing and relaxing at. So we just have lots of opportunities for you to come and have a good time. Well, and I understand it's kind of how we met. We have a connection from way back concerning a little horse. Can you tell me something about that? Yeah. Our horse that we own out here at Camp PD, uh, my daughter's horse is named Cotton, and she's part Marsh, Tacky, and Paint, and you used to own her. Yes, it's, uh, like I said, folks, this has been a quite a journey for the old cowboy and coming up here at Camp PD and home folks and stuff. Well, i tell you what. Let's ease on back so we can ride a little bit. You want to? Well, I'm not riding today, but head on on. Come on. My name is Catherine Henderson, and I'm here with my horse, Chatham, who is a quarter horse. I want you to stay tuned for more horse tales with Blair and the PD Cowboys. With me now is Bonnie Lewis, barn manager of Camp PD. Bonnie, I heard you got a quite a history over at Sherall State Park. Tell me about that. Well, I was there for 26 years, and then I got promoted to H. Coover Black as their park manager. And over at H. Coover Black, we had um, mainly horseback riders with our biggest user group, and then you had retriever and field trial um, user groups that um, would come use the facility. And we'd stay busy from probably September till mid-May. And then summertime, it got sort of slow because of the bugs and heat. Right, and uh, you mentioned that you started at Sherall State Park as a lifeguard. Lifeguard, mm -hmm. huh. That's in your high school days? 
in the high school days. Right. Right. So I'm sure there's no bikinis in that summer, was there? Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a history, folks. But anyway, so when I was on the Horseman's Council, I kept hearing Bonnie Lewis, Bonnie Lewis, Bonnie Lewis. I said, one of these days, I'm going to meet Bonnie Lewis. And lo and behold, through Camp Big PD, I had uh, some good friends of mine on the Horseman's Council said, boy, when, how are things going to be when Bonnie uh, leaves Cooper Black? But old Butch Driggers over there is doing a real good job. And my neighbor loves you to death by the job mm -hmm. that you have done and doing here. Miss Marchetti? That's true. Yeah. You never know really the mutual friends you have till you get out here. Well, listen, tell me a little bit what's going on out here with your students. Out here we have, um, like I said, we have, um, I have 10 horses out here. Four, four of them are little Welsh ponies that a lady boards with us. And then there's three that are uh, boarders that we use in our lesson, lesson right. um, program. And they get a, a discount. Uh, boarding fee since we use them for lessons um, and then we have three that belong to the camp and that right. um, that we use for the camp in the summertime and riding lessons we teach just basics um, Western or English right. um, how to take care of them how to groom them how to saddle tackle them untack them how to how to trail ride if they want to go out trail riding right. um, just a variety of things well so if some of you in the audience has got some children that want to uh but talking about horses and talking about horses, they can contact you at Camp PD and come out here. If they have never seen a live horse, they can contact you and come out here and uh, you can teach them what they need to know, right? Yes, we, we do, um, um, like I said, usually in the afternoons, three to three to till dark, um, try to fit you in. Um, during the summertime, like I said, we have camps that we're pretty tight, much tied up there because we do camp in the morning. Right. And then we have Girl Scouts that come over from the Girl Scout camps that utilize the camps in the evening for horseback riding. But so you could, uh, a beginner could come out and learn the ropes and uh, not only do uh, riding here in the arena, but y'all got what, seven, eight miles of trails Trail. here? Mm -hmm. Right. And we do little short trail rides. Right. Once they get comfortable in here and I feel like they can go outside the arena and handle the horse, be able to stop it, make it go, right. turn it, that kind of thing, then we, we venture out outside the wooden rail there. Well, I seen your eyes light up while ago when we was talking about trail riding and stuff. That's, that's your expertise. That's what you're passionate about, right? That's like I like to do, trail ride. Right. Yeah. And like I say, uh, everybody says Cooper Black is a lot better place because you're passionate about the trail riding and stuff. Do y'all... Uh, Intend to expand your trail riding uh, here? We hope to. With the um, Girl Scout has property that uh, adjacent to here, right. and um, they said we could go over there and ride. So I think you could add probably another eight miles and probably get a pretty good trail ride out here. Right. Well, we rode a little bit while ago, and I enjoyed that. Saw a little different wildlife and different scenery and stuff. Just wasn't clip plop along and stuff like that. Well, speaking about trail riding, let's just kind of trot on down this game board and go over there and ride a little bit. You want uh -huh. to? Let's saddle up. Ladies first. All right, Bonnie, before we get ready to go trail riding, give me a couple of pointers here. All right, one thing, you've got your foot way too far in the stirrups. Remember, it's just the ball of the, ball of the foot that needs to stir, and your heels down. you got your heels down looking good. And keep your hands, don't, you know, low, but don't, you know, if you go into a different gait, trot or the lope, you know, still keep your hands low. Don't let them go way up high, because a lot of times when the higher you take the, the reins up, that signals the horse to go faster. All right, I got you. All right, how and, about, which... How's my toes should be positioned in, out, out like that? And when it just, all right. I have a tendency. Uh, I watch myself take pictures doing like that, and uh, so that is the proper position right there. Mm -hmm. You want them? As you see, Caitlin riding hers right there. She's got her heels looking good. And you want your legs actually when you look down too. When you look down, the only thing that you should see is the top of your toe, tip of your toe from your, you come out. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I've been words, if you're going this, if you've got thing, because you want it right there at that girth. Okay, so all I should see? Mm -hmm. When you look down, just like the tip of your toe. I should look down and I should see a terrific view, right? Mm -hmm. I got you. Well, this old cowboy learned a little something today. Let's go trail ride, Bonnie. All right, saddle up. <laughs> We have a lot of people riding with us today here at Camp PD using a lot of different tack. That brings us to our tack tip of the day. Hi folks, I'm Mark Hosman with your tack tip of the day. Today we're going to talk about a piece of equipment that can be attached to any saddle. It's called a night latch. Most people who ride with western saddles, when they get in any kind of trouble or a storm with a bucking horse or a bronc or any horse that's spooking or anytime you get nervous about crossing some scary obstacle, want to hold on to the saddle horn. 
problem with holding on to the saddle horn is if you're holding it you can't use it if you're using a rope or any other thing if you're holding on to your night latch it gives you a lot better angle when you're in the saddle to take your fingers up under the latch because it's connected to the pommel and it's a lot easier to keep yourself in the proper position to stay in the middle of your horse when you run into any kind of technical difficulties out on the trail riding young colts or like I say, on an, on an older spooky horse, it gives you a lot better opportunity to stay on than holding on to the saddle horn. And that's your tack tip of the day. My name is Caitlin Evans and I'm here with my horse Cotton. I have been trail riding with Blair and the PD Cowboy. Please stay here for more action. Joining me now is Wiley Bell who has a very emotional horse tale for you. <laughs> Hey Blair. Hey. Your dad, you know, everyone likes the PD Cowboy, yeah. but he's got some dirty tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> um, back in December, um, at Christmas time, my um, husband and I had gone to Pennsylvania to visit my family, and while we were gone, I had some friends looking after the horses, mm -hmm. and we came home, and um, first thing I do is check on my horses, and um, there was one missing, and it happened to be this one, and um, she uh, she belonged to your dad at the time, so I was quite scared uh -huh. <laughs> that she was missing. And um, well, I um, started putting some clues together and saw that there were some horse trailer tracks in the yard. And um, I had left out a, a halter in case um, anyone needed to do anything with the horses. Well, that was missing too. So I put two and two together and I realized that someone had stolen my horse. Oh my gosh. And I was so upset. I just didn't know how we were going to find her. And, um, you know, David and I had a plan. She was going to be my horse one day. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that she was gone and sold in a horse factory somewhere. <sighs> And we called the police, and oh my God, I had my husband calling the cops and everything, and um, called some friends to come help us find her. And um, I was crying. I was so sad. I, I just I knew she was gone. And about that time, my friends come pulling up in the yard with her in the trailer, and here comes your dad. And with a big surprise, she had a bow on her, and David presented her to me as a big Christmas gift, but first he had to steal her from me because oh he knew that was the only way he was going to get her out of my hands. But so yeah, he really scared me. Goodness. Thought she was stolen, but just well, a I guess big it trick. was good at the end, but that was mean <laughs> for a while. It was very mean. I was very upset. Well, I'm glad it all turned out good. Yep, and now she's my horse. Yeah. And I, David, that was a very nice, very nice gesture, but very yeah. mean. Lady. And never again, right? No. <laughs> Do not steal my horse again, PD Cowboy. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing with us. You're welcome. <laughs> We've had such a great time here today at Camp PD. I want to thank Jason Steen for inviting us up here. We got to ride on their beautiful trails. This place really does have something for all ages. It sure does. Big thank you to Mary Jane Evans for telling us all about Camp PD and what goes on up here. And a very special thank you for the horse whisperer up here, Bonnie Lewis. Bonnie is very knowledgeable with the lessons and everything that goes on up here. And she really taught the PD Cowboy a few things that I needed to work on. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Sure do. And I know we always talk about the weather, but today it was cold. It sure was, Blair. And also, I've got a little extra treat for our audience out here for folks. Jason Steen and I went off to the side and worked a little deal out. We're going to put a couple more stackies up here for trail riding and lessons and everything. So you can contact Jason at Camp PD and line it up. That's right. And I think they'll also be up here for their summer camps. That's, Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I want to thank our sponsors, Doug's Harley Davidson and also the South Carolina Horseman's Council. Please go by and visit Doug's Harley Davidson and tell them that you heard about them on Horse Tales. Also, don't forget, we're on Facebook and visit our website, horsetailstv.com, and sign our guest book. We'd love to hear what you think about the show, and we're also on Twitter. That's right, folks. When you're in the saddle, keep your reins low and your hands quiet. See you next week. <laughs>